y'all can hear me let me know if y'all can hear me please put a one in the chat boom thank you 11 thank you colette DeJure. thank you lisa t and thank you divested rebel for the super chat what's going on lady posh welcome our new mod squad member by the name of raven beauty hey dominique how y'all doing check it i'm glad all of you have made it y'all know right first let me explain myself i like consistency i love consistency there hasn't been a Black History Month where I didn't come run my dick liquor. So since, you know, it's Black History Month, I'm going to peek out here for a second. Because guess what? Y'all tried it. Y'all tried it. I've been looking at all the wonderful, you know, tributes to a bunch of jackasses out here. Hmm? I'll get to y'all tax bullshit at some other time. Because that's juicy as fuck, too. Y'all getting unalived for your taxes. Same shit, different year. Same as 1974, 2012, all that good shit, right? Same shit. So ain't no rush to it. Ain't no rush. But happy Black History Month. I can't even say it with a straight face. I can't even say it with a straight face. All right. So let's not let, let's not stall. Let's go ahead and share this screen real quick. I can't believe y'all up here playing. One of my Patreon members, right? She sent me a link to where they were celebrating Black History Month. And they had a particular nigga up there. <laughs> and I'm like, no, y'all didn't. No, y'all didn't. Y'all didn't celebrate him. It ain't who y'all think it is. It ain't Martin Luther King and none of them niggas. It's not. Right? It's the motherfucker on the thumbnail. Y'all tried it. 
Are y'all serious right now? This is some serious black history, okay? Um, this is Nat King Cole. Pause. Take a look at the jaundice in his eyes. Take a look at that cake, Mary Kay foundation he's wearing, right? The perm. He ain't natural. I mean, he was born in 1912. All of his descendants told y'all, y'all don't love yourself because you put a perm in your fucking head. <laughs> this shit is fucking hilarious. This motherfucker got a lie box perm all up in the head all of that alcoholism in his skin and eyes is just seeping through and we ain't even got to the juicy part all right we ain't even got to the juicy part those of y'all here that are really really young i'm sure i'm sure your grandmother or your great grandmother wanted to give this man some coochie trust me he is a national treasure for the black community he's one of the you know legends right well, you know, with the black community, they celebrate terrible people. Okay. If you don't know who Nat King Cole is, he's a mu musician. Okay. If you don't know him, you might know his daughter. You might. That's Natalie Cole. She was an R&B singer from back in the day. Now, her mother's gorgeous. Because let me tell you something about DNA. With him being this goddamn hideous, he had a pretty cute daughter. Eh, you know. <laughs> DNA is a motherfucker. I love the study of genetics. I do. So you know her mother's gorgeous because there ain't nothing shot up out that man's shit log that's going to make something that look decent. I'm so sorry. Sorry. But like I was saying, his family was being celebrated, him and his family. This is the picture that was sent to me. Y'all can blame the Patreon member for even hearing my mouth tonight, okay? So that's Nat, that's his wife, Maria, right? And that's Natalie Cole on the right. They're in London in 1963. They use this shit to promote black motherfucking love, black family, black excellence, black, 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 and more motherfucking black. You can be amazing as a black person. Oh, my God. Let me tell you. Don't let them people tell you that our men don't stay around for their children. Y'all funny. Y'all funny. Y'all doing this shit. First of all, they're in London, okay? In order to produce any fake imitation black excellence, you had to get, go get around white people. That's number one. But we won't start with that shit there. We're just going to keep going. A lot of y'all don't know. Okay, y'all think this was his first wife? I'm trying to see something in the chat. Can it put a one if this is black love and Maria is his first wife? I'm, I'm trying to see something because y'all crack me the fuck up with this bullshit, huh? <laughs> Our man, oh no, you know what the fuck I mean. Don't you go in there putting that quote on quote on there. I fuck, fuck a black man, fuck him. Let's get okay. No, all right, let's get it. And somebody put a three, you funny. So let's get it, y'all. This right here is his first wife. Now, you got he got a type, but don't black men always have a type? They, haven't they been telling y'all for years that you ain't it? Hmm? You ain't it? I don't want y'all getting into no colorism arguments. I really don't, because to keep it all the way real with you, they ain't it either. His first wife was named Nadine. Oh, Miss Nadine. Hey, Miss Nadine. She was a mammy, right? But she got the fuck on after about eight years because he was a piece of shit, right? Let's keep it moving. So this is Nat and Natalie's mama, you know, faking for the, ca the camera. This is they stunting for the gram back in the day. <laughs> this is the stunting of, for the gram in the 50s and 60s. That man in that household was very verbally abusive. Just look at him. Look at him. I want y'all to take a look at his face and imagine tomorrow, Saturday morning, the first thing you see when you open your eyes is this nigga. Hmm? But anyway, she loved him. Let's keep going. Another light skin. Y'all saw his first wife was light skin. But uh, I'm going to tell you like this. That's a cute outfit, by the way. That's a cute outfit, Maria. I love the classic look. 
very cute, very, very, very beautiful woman. This right here is who he was fucking with. Pull up on me. Listen, <laughs> pull up on me. Y'all black, black women, black women, nothing has changed today that wasn't already there back in the goddamn day. Do y'all know who this is? I'm trying to see something. Because if you was sitting down on the floor watching TV with your grandma, you should know who this bitch is. Y'all should know who this is. I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry, DC. Mistress Rogue um, stream y'all kicked her off. She's in the back. Okay. Does anybody on this panel know who this bitch is? Because I'm going to tell y'all who she is. Let me let me grab Mistress Rogue because this is going to be juicy. Juice lady. All right. Here we go, Mistress Rogue. Uh-oh, and Kyra's in the back, too. Welcome back, Kyra. So check it. If Are y'all familiar with the show Hee Haw that your grandma used to watch? It's a comedy show. It was in living color for white people before in living color. I hope I, hope I said that right. Right? Okay. Well, this woman, her name is Ganilla Hutton, okay? She played Nurse Goodbody on the show Hee Haw. She also was on Petticoat Junction. OK, this is her on set of the comedy show. Well, with those comedy shows, just like with In Living Color, they had a musical segment. All right. So Nat starts banging Miss Hutton all up under his wife's throat, all in the face, wasn't trying to hide it. He was dogging his wife out so fucking bad that Miss Hutton called the wife, Maria, and said, Maria, listen. He is a piece of shit. I know I ain't shit for fucking your husband. I know. But ma'am, he hates your guts. Walk away. He really cannot stand you. And I'm just telling you, just woman to woman, your husband is a piece of shit. Okay? She picked up the phone and called. Okay? It is what it is. So here's the deal. He kept going. Fucking. Fucking. Leaving out his house. Going to be with her leaving Maria at home, crying her eyes out, kind of doing the same shit that y'all's niggas do to y'all today, except for y'all jump on Facebook and play hard and act like you're going to whoop some ass and all that shit. It's, it's hilarious to me. It really is. So check it, y'all. Nat got diagnosed with lung cancer, okay? So at that point, he finally said, you know what? Hmm, I'm going to stop fucking with her. I'm going to be good to you, Maria. Now that he's dying, he said, I'm going to stop fucking with her. You got it. You won. You the main bitch. I ain't got a two coochie minimum no more. Honey, I'm home. Right? It only lasted for a couple of weeks because he was fucking Miss Hutton to the day he died. And y'all celebrating this shit. I'm trying to see something. I bet a lot of y'all didn't know this story. Right? Y'all just celebrating a black man because he's a black man. You have no idea how much these motherfuckers hate you. You thought the light skin was something because I saw some of y'all down there talking about she biracial and da 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 da. Y'all, that ain't your worry. Black men do not like black women. And I've been telling y'all that for a very, very long time. If you can't learn from history, you just can't learn. Huh? So after he died, okay. She went on back to her community because most of the time, the white girls, right? They're just doing experimental shit log testing. And after they get enough, they go back. Well, she went back and she had three children back to her community. And she had been married for 43 years until her husband died in 2012. Did you hear what I said? You are the only ones taking these niggas seriously. And that's one of the reasons I had to go. I had to go on break because it's just, it's nonsense that keeps going on generation after generation after generation after generation. And it is what it is. And you just find a picture in black and white. It's a black man. Throw it up. Say what he was doing. Happy Black History Month. Fuck a Black History Month. I don't give a fuck. These motherfucking black men cannot stand you. Aaliyah, do you have anything on anything I just said? Because I think I just <laughs> ate right there. 
Well, you know, like I told you yesterday, I really don't know a whole lot about his story or him, but I do know that this same story keeps writing and rewriting itself over and over again. I saw that he was supposed to be, from what I did read about him, that he was supposed to be some big Black community activist. And it's funny how the most pro-Black power to the people, let my people go, always seem to find freedom, equality, in a safe haven far away from the tyranny of the oppressive evil white man by diving straight off into the white woman's pussy. Lord have mercy. And old Nat, he dove so far in it that his ass died. I mean, a hot ass <laughs> nigga. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I had to, I had to say it. I had to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. Girl, listen. Lisa T, here's the thing. He was so abusive in that house. Y'all know when kids grow up, they usually, when they come from our abusive household, they have one issue or another. His daughter was significantly, majorly addicted to a substance that starts with H and the other one that a lot of black folks was addicted to in the 80s. She was so fucked up in the head, his daughter, y'all, that she did so many substances, because I got to be careful on stinking ass YouTube, pull up that she blew her fucking kidney out. She needed a new kidney and she did get a kidney transplant. When I tell y'all his daughter was messed up from growing in that house, watching the way y'all legend, Nat was treating the family. Y'all, did y'all know that Natalie Cole was a prostitute after being an R&B singer? I'm trying to see something. Let me look at my comments. Hmm? I did know that actually. <laughs> <laughs> Go off, Mrs. Rope. My aunt told me about that, and I couldn't believe that shit. So, I, and I, I trust her. So, I went and double checked. You trust but verify. And I could not believe that somebody who has come from a quote unquote legends household would stoop so low as to work engage in ex work. No. And since we are doing out motherfuckers who ain't who are all pro black, let's talk about Mr. No Woman No Cry because his side piece got on social media and talked about their endless love. And she, yes, she is one of them. She is of the patriarchy variety and then black people were trying to come here not on black history month he's a pillar you trying to taint his legacy like he wasn't sticking his dick in this woman for six years and i believe good old net was sticking his dick in this woman for what that woman right there for about 10 to 15 years if i'm not mistaken Listen, so nothing he changed throwing his dick he was throwing his dick in a circle that ugly ass nigga net king cole oh baby he's very familiar with the walls of a lot of women's coochie all right i'm just trying to tell y'all y'all I'm an old bitch, okay? And I, I got some older women that follow me as well, but I'm going to tell you, my soul is old as fuck. Let me tell you how old my soul is, all right? A lot of y'all don't even know what a prostitute's tout is. Natalie was a prostitute's tout. Now, a lot of people get tout and pimp mixed up. You need to do your research on some of these black folk because they were in a hot ass funky mess i don't drag them because it's my pleasure i'm just telling you the truth because i don't i don't deal with white folk. i don't all right but you need to know that you are in a situation if you still got hope for these people it's going to get worse and i just had to put that out there a lot of people don't know what that means okay and you get that mixed up natalie was doing some dog shit because she wanted to get high okay i'm gonna let y'all do y'all research on tout versus pimp oh she was out there Okay. Oh, she was. She was. Y'all. As my sister said, she was down bad, y'all. It was not cute. You would have never known it looking at her like toward the end of her life because she got cleaned up and got the help she needed. But I couldn't believe it was this like same two people. That's how fucked up she was in the game. And furthermore, I'm just gonna say it. I don't give a fuck about making enemies. They hate these bitches. Hate us anyway. So mm -hmm. what's one more? Um, if black people celebrate black. Uh, Figures just know they were probably fucking awful, especially if it was a black man or a mulin ass mammy. They were awful. One of them was either doing some fuck shit, engaging in fuck shit, and the other one was enabling the fuck shit. I don't give a fuck about y'all heroes or your pillows because the truth of the matter is, you don't have he heroes and pillars. You have mulin ass mammies and niggas that they was covering for. That part. Oh. Don't worry about making anybody mad tonight, Mistress Roll. We're about to piss a whole lot of people off when we start talking about Monique. So we're oh. just getting started. Oh, oh hey. I, mean, uh, I just had to be consistent because I get up here and brag all the fucking time about 
you know, this channel never changing. I haven't missed a Black History Month yet. And I was going to, but I said, nope, because I won't be able to talk no more shit about being consistent if I didn't come up here and do this shit. Snapple, you got anything? Because we we segue and then I'm going to get Ebony. And this fixing to be an awesome goddamn evening. Happy Friday. Hey YouTube, I know y'all, I know y'all missed us. Some of y'all, some of y'all hoes can't afford ten dollars to little raggedy dollars to come sneak behind the wall. You know, you know, we ain't missing B. We've been back there doing our thing, but we're back. So I hope I hope y'all op ass hoes got y'all notepads so y'all can steal <laughs> our little one-liners and shit. As far as um this ugly ass, for, I don't know these people. I don't know no black history. I can't. I, my brain won't allow me to retain anything. We probably discussed this motherfucker before. We I haven't. don't know. We I haven't. Know. I just let him sit where he was because I didn't think, and, and it was <laughs> much to my surprise, that people think this is a good dude. How many times y'all gonna get fooled? Uh, you know how they do. I'm not surprised. They always want to uphold anybody, and as long as it's a black male, they'll they will find a way. It don't matter. He could have done the most heinous shit. Oh, not. Not during February. It's Black History. Fuck Black History Month. <laughs> Fuck that. Y'all don't deserve a month. It's Valentine's Day month, bitch. Shout out to all the lovers. Love on yourself. If you don't got a boo, make sure you treat yourself. Go to the spa. You know, get your nails did. Do it for yourself. This is about Valentine's Day all month. That part. What's happening, Ebony? I remember when I was growing up, and I, I was a big fan of Natalie Cole. And I remember, um, hmm. Around when I was around 10, no, 8 to when I was 12, she was down bad. And, and I, you know, I read all the Jet Magazine things on her. I mean, I was a fan. And I never understood why. Now, ta-da, I got it. Because mm -hmm. even if you want to really look into Black history, you, <laughs> the sanitized versions are going to be there. Absolutely. Uh, this is so unsavory, but I hate to say it. It's not abnormal. No, uh, it's just not abnormal. That guy looked like the back of a shovel digging in mud, but <laughs> because he had a penis. <laughs> all right. He, he, you know, he got to muck break everywhere. I mean, and these women were probably these, you know, oh, you know, you stay stand by your man, stand da 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 da. So many black women have done that that we are in a bad hole today. And mm -hmm. I mean, not me, but a lot of them out there. And I and I feel bad for it. It's like y'all not listening. You're not listening. It's like you have ears for no reason. Just big hoop earrings. I don't get it. <laughs> Check it, y'all. I had to scroll back up to this because I I, I just want to say something. Okay. Black women, I don't know why y'all constantly are coming on any platform saying how against interracial dating you are because of what happened to black people back in the day, right? Jim Crow, slavery, all the good shit, right? Black men have never had a problem with it, ever. You were the one sitting there thinking that y'all fixing to group up and make these black babies and black family and da 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 They wasn't with that shit. Even the ones that did in the 50s and 60s marry a black woman, nine times out of 10, she was lighter skinned. And <laughs> nine times out of 10, also, he was fucking on her on the side, okay? On the white woman. Because this is the deal. Y'all got to stop this shit. It's up to you. But, you know, keep giving me commentary. And I'm going to love you for it. You're the mm -hmm. only ones. Yes, ma'am. Real quick, it's funny that they're so against that, but and they're giving this motherfucker props. But I saw a bitch dragging Ella Fitzgerald, who married a white man, I believe, in 1956 or 1957 from a Oslo. black woman. Yes, her? Get out a here. black woman dragged her on black history on these black you history gotta, months. You gotta, you gotta be shitting me right now. I got the screenshot. I'll show it to you in Discord as soon as I find it. She drugged the fuck out of Ella Fitzgerald for marrying that white man. I believe he well, was Norwegian. Okay, look, Mistress Rosa, if she's going to drag her, then she's got to drag, I don't, I don't know, Pearl Bailey, who did the same thing. Okay? Tommy, yeah, Meyer, Meyer, uh, she also, um, it was Pearl Bailey and another one, Maya Angelou. All she, interracial marriages. She, okay? She went back, though, and started mammy. Maya Angelou came back to the black man. Hold it. No, she man. didn't. Oh, oh, listen, came yes, back mammy and like a motherfucker. Hello, uh, black man. You are uh, the only man ever to do great things. I couldn't stand that bitch. Shut the fuck up. 
sit down and chill, girl. Huh? What's in your throat? She was also a prostitute. <laughs> oops, oops, oops. Maya Angelou was a sex worker and she was also a madam. Yes, she was. All right, then. Talked a lot of shit about morals, though. Hey, Kyra, how are you? Hello, Barbara. This is Becky. But good evening, DZ. Good evening, ladies. Hey. Uh, so, look, I, DZ, Aaliyah, all of y'all, I've been saying since I first came up on your platform that these unicorns, quote unquote, are no better. And here is proof. Here is a so called unicorn from back in the day, the first, what, black man featured on TV, and he's still doing the same type of cicada shit as the street dudes. And also to piggyback off of what you said, DZ, about how black women need to stop tripping about, you know, interracial dating and marriage. Look, uh, Nat King Cole was, when did Emmett Till happen? Like in the 50s, Oops. the Emmett, and then Nat King Cole and Sammy Davis Jr. were doing the same thing, messing with Becky at the same time it happened. So shut up about Emmett Till. Just shut up because look, Tyrone was with the shit back then and he's with the shit now. So you need to stop talking about, well, we should be interracially dating because, you know, X, Y, and Z. No, no, no. Some of those black men that were at Emmett Till's open casket funeral, you go check me. Do you hear me? Go check me and see if I'm lying to you. Some of those black men that were at Emmett Till's open casket funeral with his bloated face and body beat the fuck up. They left and went and jumped knee deep in some Becky Cooch. Listen, you're the only one bothered by all of that shit. You're the only one that has your fist in the air. You're the only one that's still holding down the fort to make sure, you know, what is wrong, y'all? Easy, easy. Yes, if it had if it had been between, let's see, I don't know, Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra, Frank would have got it. Uh, that part, the blue eyes. Frank would have got it. He had all of me. Old blue eyes. Old <laughs> blue eyes was a listen. Old blue eyes. I heard he was a beast of the sheets, and so was what was his name, <laughs> Errol Flynn, because his grandson married a black woman from Jamaica. I heard Errol. Arrow was was something to be a force to be reckoned with if we gonna be all the way one hundred. Okay. okay, now y'all giving me visions I don't want with these six hundred year old men. Look, I, come look on, now. Here. anybody got anything on the Black History Month segment because it's trash. The whole thing is trash. Anybody got anything? My, no. I wanted to add something about the whole anti-interracial dating that we see amongst the mammies, because you I'm sure you've seen some of them even go so far as to look at, you know, at least under Jim Crow, you know, we were had black families. No, the fuck you didn't. You had one, y'all were still sharing a nigga. Mm -hmm. And just one of y'all got the ring. And then he was still fucking Becky. So y'all need to shut up. Like DZ has been saying, shut up about well, it. Tyrone was with it. Yeah. You got to think about even back then, they were kind of forced to be together. Think about it. After they the veil was lifted and they were free to marry, be with who they want to be with and marry who they want to marry, they abandoned a lot of those families. So uh, the, mm -hmm. ex Exactly, Aaliyah. Let's be real. The black males used the civil rights movement to abandon black neighborhoods, black business ownership, and black families. Because we see the, like you said, the proof is in the pudding. Look at the fallout of what happened after civil rights. And mm. So Kyra, Kyra, dear, so you're telling me all that marching and the fire hose, the dog, Bull Connor, marching up and down the streets for 50 years was just for that, so they could that. Well, mm. Exactly. I mean, if you really think about it, like, let's, I mean, since we're sacrificing sacred cows, Think about those sit-ins. You mean to tell me of all the things to protest that were going on in the Jim Crow South, we needed to sit at a damn lunch counter, be spat on and have stuff thrown and poured on us just so this nigga can sit next to Becky and eat a 
ham sandwich. Are you fucking kidding me? And it was me? always the most pro-black or the pro-blackest men. Because if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Nat King Cole was part of the NAACP. He sure was. was. Yep. Sure was. It's yep. always the blackest of the black, let my people go type of folk that, that do this type of shit. And that's been the story throughout history. And it's still going on today. And nobody ever holds them accountable. Accountable. So they want to hold black women who date out to an entirely, completely different standard. Listen. Okay, what about Freddie Hampton? Freddie Hampton did the same thing. Let's not talk about Fred because I, I I really I'm be already pissing off the blacks and I'm gonna throttle back this evening. But uh, let's not forget recently on TikTok there was a black male, black heaviest male list that said black women weren't really slaves anyway. It was only the black man that suffered. So these are the people y'all are fighting for, black women. You do with that information what the fuck you will. And if you're looking for the video, you can probably find it among the YouTube shorts because somebody did commentary over it and it was rather brief commentary but nonetheless he was saying, I don't see why the fuck I gotta do this for black women. Y'all weren't really slaves. Y'all were happy to jump in master's bed like y'all weren't covered in master's daughters, master's wives, master's nieces, anything that had white skin and and straight hair, y'all wanted to be in it. Let's just be very fucking clear here. So, so I hope this segment was very, very nice. Um, I love the Black History segment because I love popping bubbles. I like telling the truth, right, and embarrassing the fuck out of y'all. So, but again, right, tomorrow in, in March and all the way to September and all the way to 2058, you're still going to be covered in this Black man, and he is still going to keep history strong. So, in the words of, uh, uh, DZ, it's going to get worse. Another fail. Let's go. <laughs> you fucking failed. I'll, I'll see y'all again next year on Black History. Anyway, anybody got anything before we get into this fat ass, mammy ass, weird ass bitch? Because I'm ready. Yeah, you know, maybe so. Okay. I'm going to let that sit there for a second. I'm going to let that sit there for a second. Speaking of loving black men, Monique is a metaphor for everything that y'all do out here. Monique has been loving on black men all her fucking life. She has fought for them, spoke up for them, fucked on them, fucked several. And now she settled down and agreed to share what she calls her daddy. Do y'all see how dysfunctional that is? Okay. The first point I want to bring up about this situation, ma'ams. Monique thought that she was going to go as viral as Cat Williams. That's why she went there. But let me tell you this. Like I've always been saying, and the panel has always been saying, and anybody with some good goddamn common sense has been saying, Black women don't matter in the Black community. We're talking about about 5 million views versus 60 million views. The numbers don't lie. She was still, she was spilling the same scandalous ass tea right? It was just as juicy, so-called, right? Because I got bits and pieces of the shit as what Cat Williams was saying. But at the end of the day, this Black woman that has been having her fist up for the Black community for decades, she got shit on. After that, she got the reactions, though. She got a whole lot more reactions from Black men than Cat Williams did. They was dragging the fuck out of her, celebrities and the like. Ladies, I don't know who else to present but this woman as a cautionary tale, an example that I don't care how much you dog, crawl, creep, suck, fuck, cape for, act the fool. You're not going to be something that's cherished in that community. You have been a foregone conclusion for eons. Now they just waiting to shit on you. It's black men standing there with their pants halfway down waiting for you to put your head in place so they can shit on you, bitch. Huh? This is ridiculous, by the way. Before I start ranting, I'm going to have to pass the mic to Aaliyah because I got some shit I want to show y'all concerning this. Y'all better stop mewling for these niggas because the hatred is getting worse. Oh, you're trying to pass the mic to me because you know I'm going to go in. It's going to be a while. Girl, <laughs> listen. <laughs> oh, no, I'm about to go in, though. Both Monique and her husband are nothing but a pair of passive-aggressive motherfuckers that try to come across as saccharine sweet while being antagonizing at the same time. And he is a hustler and con man, if I ever saw one. Uh, I See, these are the type of people that, that go around 
I'm saying what I'm saying out of love for you, my brother and sister, because I'm trying to help you out. And this is the thanks I get. Oh, bless your heart. You are hurting. You need to heal. So I'll pray for you, my sister. You know, that fake deepness that makes you want to punch a motherfucker in the face while they're <laughs> smiling and smirking the whole time, calling full grown adults, babies, my babies. We speak about this shit all the time. The love and light, peace and blessings. We're in this perpetual state of positivity. My brothers and sisters, bullshit, trying to be the beacons of morality when not too long ago, she was just talking about giving him passes to fuck other women. See, I can't with the delusion when it comes to black women like her. All this, my husband is a king. My husband is black. My husband is strong. My husband is the best thing since life's bread. My husband is God. My husband, my husband, my husband. It's almost as if black women are trying so hard to prove to the world that they actually have good men at this point. And this is the only group of women who will sit up on the worldwide way of doing this and constantly praising these men. And it is so embarrassing because like I told DZ yesterday, I've never heard, ever heard her refer to her husband as a king for as long as I've known her. You know, and that's the thing. She never had to keep telling anybody that because what's already understood doesn't need to constantly be reaffirmed all the time. And it's the same thing with most real military men. If you know any real military men, and I do, he will tell you that most men who have truly earned their stripes hate to be called sir. They hate that shit. And this fool is running around here calling her own husband daddy. And I guess she thinks that's supposed to show submission or some shit like that. But it's creepy talking about this grown ass man raised her into being the woman she is today. Laying all that praise on that thick is just overkill. But there are a lot of black women who feel like they have to constantly stroke their husband's ego publicly. And it's mm. very telling whether they know it or not because you think that constantly singing his praises is going to deter from the fact that this nigga isn't known for shit outside of riding your coattails because black women are too afraid that if they actually shut their mouths long Long enough and let these so-called black men stand on their own merit alone, then society will actually get an opportunity to see just what it is that we've been talking about. And that's why they let them hide behind them where they're always at the forefront running their fucking mouths and trying to convince the world of how great your husband is. No, ma'am, you need to let him talk and let's find out what qualifies him to be your manager and negotiating on your behalf. What deals has he closed? Who has he successfully propelled to stardom or had reached any help reach any real level of success? See, black women know deep down that their men don't have any wins under their belts. So that's why you have them sitting up all over the internet or television or wherever. They're sitting around constantly. I got a strong black king. He is excellent. We got to speak life into our men. Lift him up. And then you start giving them all these unearned accolades and, that, and shit that they just don't deserve. And y'all start making up non-existent jobs and positions just so they can work next to you. Black women, y'all have got to stop doing this bullshit. You are not helping them. And you think that this is being supportive. And this shit only works in the black community. Because I can assure you that nobody else is buying what you're selling. This shit that looks hard. horrible to people on the outside looking in. Because you can love your husband or your man. But when you got to do all that, you're capping, sis. And I see right through you i'm that sorry part. that part what's going on mr Schroll? because uh i I, I want to show y'all how netflix embarrassed the shit out of this bitch so i'm gonna pass the mic to you because i'm getting ready to go in Okay, well, when it comes to Monique, I would think at this point that she and black women like her would have gotten the message by now. The call is literally coming from inside the house, and it's the nigga on the other end on the phone that you pay for for him to call your stupid ass. I'm like a Lee in this, um, on this point. I don't know why black women do this. These successful black women, they will go get these nobody ass, ooh, let me be careful, these nobody ass motherfuckers, and then they will make the managers. Kelly Rowland, anyone? Because her husband ain't got no goddamn any type of 
any type of experience to be doing what he's doing for her. That's why her career stalled the fuck out. And she's still out here hardcore memory. Bammy, here is the thing, black woman. Black men will never be as good as white men. They will never be as good as Asian men. They will never be as good as any man because you haven't made them prove themselves to you. You simply acquiesce at every turn in order to try to compensate for the fact that he hasn't built you a goddamn thing. He hasn't set up any systems or infrastructure that will protect you or insulate you from any backlash that you could potentially face. Girl, what the fuck are y'all fighting for? Because it's, it's giving we're fighting for scraps, but nobody wants to say that everybody's starving. At this point, I need Monique to shut the fuck up. I want Cat Williams to shut. I want all, listen, all you blacks can shut the <laughs> fuck up indefinitely. Shut the fuck up forever. Cause I'm tired of hearing about your black ass heroes, your black ass lies and this black ass facade, this pro blackity black, black shit. When most of you motherfuckers ain't even pro black, you're not even pro black people, pro black girls, pro nothing black. You, some of you niggas only want black socks. I don't want to hear nothing else from y'all. Those gums are black, though. Pull up on me. No, Yo, right. let me tell you something. Uh, the people in power are very, very wise, okay? Very wise. I know y'all remember this whole lawsuit with Netflix because they didn't give me my, my black bitch check, okay? They was giving it to everybody else and all this shit here. Ladies, they paid Monique her settlement outside because you know, it's like, just go away. Let's not go to court. You bitching about the same shit um, that every other black woman that's t corny as fuck. Hey, I said it. I tried not to uh, come out here and say, so here's your check. Um, this was what we were going to pay you for your Netflix special. But what we're going to also do is air it. Ladies, from my understanding and from my research till three o'clock in the morning, her Netflix series, as far as comedy special comedy specials go, was the worst performing comedy special in Netflix history. Now, make no mistake about it. That's why Netflix played it. Why? Because they wanted to show you why they lowballed her because her shit was corny as fuck. By the way, black man loving stupid ass bitch, black men came for your ass with that special. Uh, Let's go. I'm pissed off. Ask me why I'm pissed off. Y'all seen that new comedy special with Monique on Netflix? Worst goddamn comedy special I ever seen in my life. What Dr. Umar be saying? 500 lashes. Listen, those dudes that y'all caping for, they can't stand you. I probably, if I wish I had a tally of how many times I've told you that they don't like you. If I could, look, I'll stop saying that they hate you, right? But I know they do. But if it tastes better in your mouth, I'm telling you, simply, they do not like you. Oh, he's not the only one. Can y'all mind if I show one more? Let's see one more. Yeah, I just want to let y'all know this is one of the sickest stand-ups. Uh, mentally ill. Uh, America, man, is sick, man. And uh, Monique is no different than the rest of these people out here, man. Monique is, Monique is sick in the head, man. She have a mental problem. Like, this whole stand-up was fucking disgusting. Like, I didn't enjoy it, man. I didn't enjoy it at all. Like, and I, I used to mess with Monique, but Monique, on this one, you need to probably go to a mental hospital or something. This shit, it like you got on here and you just talked about everything in your life that's fucked up. This shit's sad, man. This shit is sad. So anyway, like I was saying, your sweet babies, your ever loving black men didn't appreciate your shit. It would be so refreshing to see you sit the fuck down and stop trying to suck the nuts of these niggas that can't stand you. And that just doesn't go for Monique. That goes for all you black women out here that absolutely cannot let go. Right. Keep holding on if you want to. But the thing is this. You are going to get the same shit over and over and over and over and over again. She is one of the top capers for black men I've ever seen in my life as far as celebrity goes this day and age. OK, then you got the nerve. Y'all, I was going to sit down and look at the Shay Shay Club Shay Shay interview after he did his commercial, which already had my legs itching. The first thing coming out of her dick liquor, right, was trying to prove that Shannon Sharp actually does like black women. The 
the desperation. After she did that, I cut it the fuck off. I couldn't listen to any more because I knew what it was going to be. OK, I had to get the tea from reading because I can't stand her voice. I can't stand how she embarrasses black women from her relationship to her career, to her demeanor, to all this shit she's willing to put up with. She's embarrassing. And on top of that, according to your sweet babies, that fucking stand up sucked. That's why Netflix was lowballing you, because they had you at, down as a charity case or hmm? what you got, Ebony? Actually, uh, nothing. Uh, okay. I That's don't know enough. what she did. I don't. I don't know about this. So fuck this. F fuck her sideways. And Snapple, what you got? Well, you know I'm nosy, so I had to mosey on down there to Club Shay Shay. Oh my God! Like, what is this name? I don't understand. It's just giving rainbows and butterflies that name. <laughs> but um, yeah, I synced it and um couple things stood out to me one is that i didn't know that oprah had her brother on to apologize for violating her now i did not know that and i i could understand why she'd be upset by that but she kind of glazed past that and actually gave oprah props for calling her and was basically mad about other stuff related to that thing. But she just seems to me like she has like misplaced outrage. And I just, I don't think that what she's doing is going to do her any favors professionally. I think she's still making her, honestly, just in listening to her try to dispute that she's difficult to work with. It sounds like she is difficult to work with. You bring in this fucking unqualified ass, mooching ass nigga with you everywhere. This nigga don't know what the fuck he's talking about, don't know the business, aggravating everybody, and he just has to come along. And then she's calling the motherfucker daddy. I wish the fuck I would be bowing down and worshiping a motherfucker that's allowing me to be so fucking hungry that I gotta go ask and borrow money from other people. He can, I mean, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I, I, so, I mean, she ain't doing herself no favors. And of course, the Blacks, they uphold the generacy. So she's getting her little ones and her twos right now. Everybody's like, oh, Monique was right. Monique was right. But that shit is not going to translate. That Nobody's going to hire one. her. You're right. She's getting her ones because everybody came out and gave that shit a thumbs down. Keep going. <laughs> hey, keep going. No, nah, I'm just saying, like, she's, you know, I just feel like I don't see, I don't see none of this translating to her. For her, I don't see she. She feels like she's owed millions of dollars because somebody says she's difficult to work with. Unfortunately, we live in the real world. People's perception are their perception. If you and your Kang that you dragged along made people feel like you were difficult to work with, then so fucking be it. You're not owed millions of dollars because somebody had an opinion about you. It just doesn't work that way. Sorry. I mean, people don't, if people don't see that Monique's motives are self-serving at this point, I don't, I mean, it can't be more apparent. You sued the people. You got a, a settlement for an undisclosed amount. So you were paid. They released the shit. It flopped. You proved them right all along. I, I guarantee you she hasn't had anything worthwhile since. And it's like, it's just a whole bunch of shit. And now to add insult to injury, they're supposed she's supposed to be going on tour with Cat Williams. They're going together at this point. A tour that has started its foundation with a bunch of messy shit and them dragging their peers. And I hope it's gonna be truly worth it in the end when they are pretty much damaged any relationships with anybody in the business they may have had. And maybe they don't care about that and that's fine, but you have to be careful with those matches made in hell. Here's a word of advice, Mo. Be very careful with those matches made in hell where the enemy of my enemy is my friend and that's what you're going for because that means neither one of you has any loyal honor Honor or loyalty and that's you are just as likely to turn on each other the minute that something doesn't go your way and see they better make this shit work because i don't want to hear shit out of cat williams or monique later on where they're talking shit about each other because they have thoroughly enjoyed themselves dragging everybody else not that i give a fuck about that either but they have enjoyed that shit so much so now that they want to take this show on the road so you better make it work because <laughs> this is going to tell the story of who's really problematic and who's not and for two of the, the most morally upstanding people ever there should be no more issues correct well, That's all right, right then, because here's the thing. I also heard, I felt like she had a lot of misplaced anger 
with the Oprah thing. I heard that too. And I said then when she made that comment, that it sounds like your issue is with your family. Your issue should not be with Oprah because they agreed to go talk to her. Even if she contacted them for an interview for her show, they had the option then to say, no, we're not going to air our family's dirty laundry. Thank you. But no, thank you. We would not be appearing on your show. That was left up to your family to, to turn her down. Because there ain't a motherfucker alive that can call me on the phone asking me about any of my friends or my family members and expect to get a comment out of me. I'm going to redirect them back to the person they called me about. If you want to know anything about Monique, I suggest you talk to her. Do not call me and ask me a goddamn thing about Monique. And that's what her family should have said. So if you're going to be mad at somebody, be mad at them. Aaliyah, did you hear her praise T.S. Madison? I know we I know. We yeah, oh, I heard careful. that too. Okay, I'm just yeah, asking. Yeah. I'm just asking. I'm going to tell you. Y'all know the F word, and I'm not talking about the one. Y'all going to make me say that about that big dick bitch. Um, no. Y yeah, that, that that's a hot ass mess. I can't You know ahead. what I find funny, though, y'all? She's over here trying to prove that Shannon Sharp likes black women. But right. Shannon Sharp has a long and sordid history of putting down black women, specifically black women of her hue, for mm -hmm. um to exalt other women. He recently did it with Beyonce and Taylor Swift. He did it with Divine Orgy and another woman. And before that, he did it by taking a picture with Eddie Murphy's ex-wife, uh, Nicole. This motherfucker has a long track record. You can't convince me that a nigga named Shay Shay gives a fuck about black women when he's actively competing to be a black woman based on that name that he's using. You are not Irish. And even if you were Irish, good sir, they say Shay once as a male name. Shay Shay is often repeated <laughs> twice. You emphasize feminization, you fuck nigga. Let me go on mute. No, y'all. And... He sound like a slave. Shay Shay sound like a slave. He like, no, 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 no. Don't he he know, like I interview. Bubble oh, bubble. my God. He, he can't like, interview to save his life. Woo! Bro. What the fuck are you, a choo-choo train, nigga? <laughs> Shut your bitch ass off. Go grab a whip. Like, boy, get back. Get back to work. Because you sound like a slave. Uh, in, look, look, look. I'm interviewing the Grammy Award winning one top double dub winner. But welcome. Get the fuck out of here. Sorry, go ahead, Kyra, because I don't Ooh, like easy. it. He easy. sounds, listen, it's giving, it's, say your name is Toby, it's giving runaway slave. It's, it's, it's giving. Go ahead, it's, Kyra. It's giving Chicken George. All day. <laughs> but I wanted to circle back to something Aaliyah said. You're giving all this caution and advice for Monique, but the thing is, how much worse could her career be get at this point? Like, well, I mean, where else is she gonna go? Like, this is pretty much it for her because you know, like y'all have talked talk about, she has let her daddy run her career into the ground because he's a nigga who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, but she wants to just uplift her king so badly that he has ran her into the ground between that and her blaming everybody else except the nigga in her face. Like, so, that you know, her going yeah, on but tour with Cat. I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was about to say, yeah, but she's trying to convince everybody that he's the best thing that has ever happened to her. And that's why I was saying, like, I don't want to hear nothing else coming out from either one of them later on if this two of shit don't work out. Because I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear nothing from either one of them. That it sounds part. to me like Monique needs a therapist. And some medication. She's not one, and she's oh. on some. Not I'm very good, right? She, she, she can only blame herself. She can only but, blame herself for but, the way things have gone. But Ebony Phoenix, DZ, y'all are the medical professionals. Can you really give medication to for anti mammyism Like, <laughs> I don't know if you can medicate for that. No, but anxiety, yeah, and depression. That bitch there, she need to go on somewhere and sit the fuck down. Let me check this back real quick, y'all. Don't forget STDs. Oops. Antibiotics. Uh, Purple Pisces, is this your real account, ma'am? Yes, it is, DZ. Hi, can you hear me? I can. How are you? I'm good. Um, I know you said that you um didn't listen the whole way through. Unfortunately, I did. 
I listened to the whole two hours because it's easy background it's noise. Almost three hours. I wasn't fixing to do it. After, yeah. after that nigga bitch went to first trying to prove that black men like black women, I was done. It was a done deal. It was a done data, like the Jamaicans say. I couldn't do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was just background noise while I worked from home. Something real easy to listen to, roll my eyes at while I get, you know, ish done. But there was two things that I noticed throughout the thing. Um, the first was I listened to her talk for almost three hours about the male comedians, the black male comedians. She talked about how her brother, both brothers did her wrong. One stole money from her, the other one did what he did. And she talked about all these men, her own daddy, talked about her daddy gave her sister money, but not her for a car, just all these men. But by the time she got to the end of that almost three hours, she came back to black women about how we have this attitude. We, and she even admitted black women go through all this ish with black men. But she got down to it and said, we don't know how to be submissive. We don't know how to let men take the charge. Oh, she Lord. said her, her daddy, who raised her and taught her first she said her daddy started off as like a brother so monique was all messed up in the head she really does need therapy but what what made me just like i was like I, i'm i'm upset that i wasted my whole three hours is when she admitted all these men a long list of men did her wrong but she brought it back to the black women we don't know our place we don't know how to let a man be a man her daddy did this her daddy did that and i was like you you really have lost your mind like no. you said what the problem was you got right to the line and then it's back to black women we're the problem Absolutely. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. It's always going to be like that. Um, No matter what these men do to these women, it's always going to be a cat fight between black women. And we're all doing it voluntarily. All of us, divested women, swirlers, mammies, fence sitters, all of us know the, what the truth is. But instead, we're going to turn away and infight. That's why I ain't got nothing for you, bitches. I really fucking don't. Until um you, we stand on the truth, right? Then we're not going to do anything with it. I can't. I'm not going to. It's fuck you, bitch, all day. It ain't no however, but comma. Fuck them, niggas. I'm not going. You go and let me clown you over here while I drink my energy drink, you punk bitch. DZ. Yes. Yo, do you remember Monique's book back in the day called Skinny Women Are Evil? Yeah, I remember I wonder that. If she, I wonder if she wants support for, from skinny women right now, too. <laughs> Why did she try to become a skinny woman and fail? That's so funny Exactly. To me. That just show you the type of treacherous, op-ass bitch that she is. She wrote a whole fucking book about skinny women that are minding their own fucking business. And I only know about it because my fat-ass mama went and bought that book. And I was nosy, so I took a look at it. And I'm like, oh, my God. What the fuck is wrong with her? Like, and she's still the same all these years later. She just throw in my sweet babies and all this other extra shit now, trying to sound all sweet. But she real treacherous. She been treacherous. She is. She Apparently. that's that's uh Wendy Williams how that's going for her because she was doing much the same when she was flashing her ring before the fucking camera after everybody found out that her husband was slanging dick left, right, sideways, not in the, going north and four ways from fucking Sunday. So much so that he had an outside child on her. Monique is no different from Wendy Williams to me. She ain't no different from any of these other older black women. No, no different from Yana Van said with the bus driver, beloved. Fuck that bitch. Fuck all them old bitches at this point. Because quite frankly, I'm tired of y'all giving this piss poor advice to these young women coming up. No, and goddamn well, y'all have had access to the truth longer than most of us have been alive. And you're still lying. Bitch, hell hell we started out with a black history segment. This shit been going on before electricity, before indoor plumbing, before Wi-Fi. It's been there. The only thing that's changed is technology, bitch. And uh, look, I can't. So you well, go right fuck ahead. Well, Mr. Throg, my issue with it is okay, I can understand, you know, being young, young and dumb, but the thing is, though the Moniques and the Ayana, or however the fuck you say your name, Poison Ivy knows I can never say her name correctly. Her name Ileana. is Ayana. Yeah. <laughs> My the thing is they stay stuck on stupid. Like no matter how much they see, they stay stuck on stupid. They have no more wisdom or growth at their big ages now than they did at 20 years old. So what the fuck is the point of listening to an older black woman? If, I mean, I might as well just go listen to a 20 year old. I mean, after all, you're, you have nothing, you've gained absolutely nothing if you're gonna spew the same bullshit. It's I'm actually true, Kyra. Um, Jill Scott, 
uh, I mean, th there's a whole line of them who, oh God, Mary J. All of these women have just let these guys take their dignity, their bags, their careers. And mm. it was, it's like that you just supposed to offer this up to him. I, this is the no. thing, though, Ebony and everybody else. These no. bitches are not, they're not victims. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you can reach all the way fucking back, to Nat King Cole and see him jumping in and out of people's pussies like he on a trampoline. And then you come to 2023, 24, and you still trying the same shit. You are not a victim, whore. You are not a victim. You're a clown, but you're not a fucking victim. DJ, how, is is a place to be Alabama? Mm. how is it black women's fault? How do black women see this as other black women's fault? Their misfortunes. I don't get to see, see the, the rationale never I... It doesn't listen. It doesn't have to make sense. It's just the movement okay. of the goalposts. That's what it's all about. It's a big ass smoke screen. So these young black women will keep holding on, just waiting for the day where these niggas will wake up. These niggas ain't woke up since they left the plantation. They didn't wake up when they were stanking leg and their asses across the plank to get up on them damn ships to get their asses and bring you over here. They didn't wake the fuck up when they were on the continent and getting tricked out of shit. They didn't wake up. But these motherfuckers ain't been woke since the Big Bang. What are you expecting to change at this point? Hey. And Ebony is because you what are black women doing wrong is because we're too fat, we're too skinny, and we didn't fry that chicken hard enough. You're That's not white. Issue. You're not white. That's the issue. There. Mm. What do I win? We're You're not, not white. white. You're not white, basically. That's the only yeah. fucking problem. Point blank the fuck, period. <laughs> Check it. <laughs> you gotta do the yellow voice. I'm sorry, dude. Get you a bus driver, dear. <laughs> I love it. You're out of order. I can't. Oh, don't forget, you have vexed my spirit, beloved. <laughs> Your babies don't like you, bitch. They don't like you. Endless TikToks of them just dragging you, black men, black women, all your sweet babies. So can you finally shut the fuck up? Please, I'm begging you. Kind of like you begging black men to like you. I'm begging you to shut the fuck up. Hmm? Anyway. Anybody got anything? Because we're going to get to this goofy bitch later. Not her. I'm talking about the one that did that jail bid. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got one, one more thing. I mean, and here's the part of the conversation that Monique and Black women like Monique are really not going to like. And this, I keep it real no matter what shit. Because I was getting a lot of that on that couch and the way she was talking. Like, I'm a bitch from Baltimore. So be grateful my husband is by my side because that's who keeps me calm and cool when I could be doing this. I could. See, Monique just don't understand. It's a lot about her that's very off -putting. If you really pay attention to the way she talk, I'm going to say whatever I want to whomever I want. I don't matter. It doesn't matter who it offends or how rude or unprofessional it may be. Y'all got to learn to check that bullshit, Black women. And I've been telling y'all that week after week. This is not new information. All that interview showed me is that Monique still hasn't learned a goddamn thing for all that she's been through. One thing about me is that I'm a quick learner. I always have been. Some of the women just talk slow, but we're far from it. Being likable is a very important skill to have. Monique is part of the problem, but she's not ready for that part of the conversation about why nobody wants to deal with her. She just wants to be this, I'm right, you're wrong, apologize to me, better yet pay me. It's like, excuse me, hold on, who do you think you are? This whole, I don't, who, I, do you not know who the fuck I am? I am the Monique, the comedian, the Oscar winner. My work speaks for itself. I don't have to audition for anything. You're either going to give me the role or you're not. See, that's, that's the fine line between confidence and arrogance that black women keep trampling right the fuck over. Because you can be stern. She's, uh, a yeah. fat, she's a fat, funky, fried chicken, dick licking weird ass bitch that need to really shut the fuck up and bite me hard it seems like you might be either a mammy or a dusty here's the deal both of those interviews suck cat williams can kick rocks too with his zesty motherfucking ass both of them need to shut up including the host the club shay shay they they all some niggas all three of them pull up um, let me okay. um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Aaliyah, the thing though is, it isn't it interesting that Monique always stays giving you know gems about how black women should deport themselves and comport themselves? I mean, really, like that's like listening to yeah. Sukiana telling you that you shouldn't be wearing a bonnet in public. Should you Absolutely. be wearing a bonnet in public? No, but are you really gonna take it from Sukiana or Monique? 
she is the last somebody who that who should be telling anybody about proper behavior or proper etiquette and that's why i say you you know it's one thing you can say what you mean and mean what you say without being a nasty entitled bitch and that's really what i get from her because all that type of attitude does is burn bridges where as soon as your name comes up people are like hell no i'm not dealing with her i'm not dealing with her mouth or her husband now get the fuck out of my office and black women got that I'm so hood, so I'm gonna keep it 100 shit bad. It's like, girl, sit your stupid ass the fuck down and at least try to behave like a sensible adult. And the only reason I think this com that conversation needed to be had, because a, a lot of black women talk too much shit and you think that that means you're standing on business by running your mouth. Stop standing on business and start being about your business, because there's a big fucking difference between the two. And I need y'all to learn that. That I wanted part. to um can I jump in? I'm sorry. Absolutely. Okay, I wanted to say a uh, point to what Kyra and um Aaliyah said um regarding Monique criticizing the bonnets, as we all know, we 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 can agree with that. But again, coming from Monique, who don't show shave her legs on red carpets. Do y'all remember that? <laughs> okay, I wonder if she started shaving her legs again. Really? But that's another thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she no. was out there with her legs hairy looking like a grown ass man on the red carpet you could put some cornrows in the in the hair that was on her legs on the red carpets <laughs> and <laughs> ebony, ebony phoenix <laughs> monique made it a point to draw attention to the fact that she did not shave her legs yep. yeah and then and then but for Aaliyah, i'm glad you i that stood out to me too when she was like oh y'all better be glad my husband is there because if he's not here i'm gonna get basically saying she really cuts up and acts up when he's not around to kind of tame okay. her so I'm like, Seriously. okay, then you're then you're giving credence to when they say you're difficult to work with. And I really feel like black women, this Monique is a cautionary tale. Look how she fumbled her Oscar win. I'm gonna keep it 300. I don't think she deserved it. Monique is not this wonderful, fabulous actress. She plays the same, she playing herself in these roles, different facets of herself. And I just, I mean, I haven't seen any Oscar worthy, no, no depth, no range. I mean, for her to have the nerve to think she don't have to audition, you do need to audition. I can't even see Monique playing an uh, actual like professional that knows how to speak without saying my sweet babies and shit. Like, I mean, I'm just saying like she, she could play that Southern ass grandma with the fucking ham hock arms that you know could cook good. But I'm just saying like, <laughs> she don't deserve, she don't, she, she's well, delusional. She's delusional. Me, and I feel like it's a, I'm sorry. I just feel like it's a caution. It's a cautionary tale. That's all I'm saying. Like we have to play the game, black women. It is what it is. Fuck what y'all feel exactly. about it. This is the real fucking world. This is reality. If you are blessed with an opportunity and you are able to navigate and network your way up to a certain point, you need to learn how to act, how to respond, how to be gracious, how to be professional, how to you know you know help you know help your fellow people or whatever just don't be such a fucking asshole don't be like like she had the nerve to compare herself to melissa mccarthy i think that's her name who, who the hell that play ursula and Ari alicia's remake um but yeah um she said that that other lady is like the white version of her and it's just like the fuck? that's not yeah, true it's like monique girl look black women if y'all watching this shit this do 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 the opposite of what monique is doing because you're not gonna get hold on a second ebony circuit. You're going to be stuck on the ch chitlin circuit, getting posted on the shade room, and that's your accolade. It ain't no checks. It ain't no. It ain't nothing of value. It's just black people. Like, oh, she ate that. That's all Monique is going to get from now on. Mm. It's delusional. Ebony, you need to say something before we roll because I, uh, listen, I, I got to get into this delusion. Well, so I was just saying that Melissa McCarthy is actually funny, so... Yeah, she That's is. I, I don't like when motherfuckers. It's delusional. She think, Charles. She probably. I can't. I simply yeah. can't. Because what they gotta understand is there is actual power in being liked by people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm able to leverage the relationships and connections that I have built to call in favors and get people to help me to get to where Thank I want to be. You, you can't do that by shitting on everybody in your quest to so-called keep it real. That whole freedom over cold switching logic has never helped black women. I know y'all have seen that one girl that is in no way exceptional or extraordinary. She may not 
even be traditionally attractive, but people still flock to her because it's just something very charming about her that makes her pleasant to be around. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I'm seeing less and less of that skill in black women. And having a shitty personality and an even shittier disposition is why a lot of y'all will always lose. I've said it before and I'm saying it now. Newsflash, you can go around saying whatever the fuck you want. You have that option absolutely without accepting the consequences you got to understand that there are going to be consequences that goes along with saying whatever you want. So as long as you understand that, then it, you're, you should be fine. I'm telling you, ladies, this is the deal. You don't have to, that keeping it real shit, I'm going to be honest with you. When you up under your government name, you don't need to be keeping it real because that's nobody, your real is nobody's business. People need to think about you what you want them to think about you. Now, if you want them to think that you a nasty bitch, you go right ahead. But if you need something, job, housing, a car, so all that type of shit, you need to portray what they want to see. That's real life. All this keeping it real and walking around with your nipples hard, acting like you're going to bust some ass, you are going to be left behind. It is what it is. I have preached billions of times about those masks. I got about 50 of them. It's people that my husband have, he's associated with them. They think I like them. I don't. But I want them to think that I like them so my husband can keep going. It's just like at these jobs. Y'all, it's people on your jobs that you think like you. They don't. They're just keeping a business relationship. And guess what? That's okay. It's okay. Because you're not fixing to lay down and fuck none of them, are you? What's going on? You just need a functional relationship so you can get what you came to get. Okay? So that yeah. you don't you don't have this emptiness or don't or have to go without certain things because you're trying to keep it real you and your keeping it real y'all gonna be hungry thirsty right jobless on the bus because you can at least you kept it real though fuck keeping it real when i get out here up under my real name and i'm with my actual family in this real world oh motherfuckers think i'm very very kind hi how are you pull yeah. up Wear a mask, but be a mirror. And what I mean huh. by that is wear your mask and keep it in place whenever you're out in public. Because there's a lot of shit I see that I simply don't agree with. But I'm also, I act like a mirror. So whatever a person reflects onto me or projects onto me, that's what I reflect back to them. Wear your mask, but be a damn mirror. It's not that hard. Furthermore, why are you complaining when all y'all do is talk about and espouse how racist the system is? You are operating in another man's infrastructure and another group of men's patriarchy and another group of men's every fucking thing because your men didn't build anything. I'm sorry, black woman. That is the reality. These are the rules of engagement. Now, how you engage with said rules, that is completely up to you. Learn At least learn what the fuck the rules are so you can know where to break them and when to break them if necessary. But you can't go around complaining about some shit that your men didn't build. That's not reality. It's not real life. Just put your mask on and be a mirror. Let people think whatever the fuck you want because you know how many rooms I walked out of just being as, nice, as sweet as can and as hmm. soon as I walked out the room, I thought I can't stand that bitch. But I that kept that part. to myself. That part, huh? And there's not enough room in the goddamn universe to tell you how many bitches I've done that to in my actual life. Oh, it was so nice talking to you. When, when can we meet up again? Knowing in my head, I never want to see that funky motherfucking whore again in my life. Pull up. Oh, or you can do what I'm doing right now, which is being about my business and putting myself in a situation much bigger than that of my opponents. See, that's called playing chess and not checkers. Because please understand why a lot of black women are standing around running your fucking mouths talking about how much you told the next person off. Yeah, I told that bitch. You better believe that the other person is somewhere playing chess and trying to figure out how to put themselves in a better position than you. So while you were so busy keeping it real, that just know that this is where the real competition begins. Because if you treat people like shit, they will return the favor with interest guaranteed. And black women have got to get smarter in this because you're standing around clapping your fucking gums and showing and shaking your asses and in some people is not the way to do it but hey don't listen to me y'all just witnessed it for yourself while Nicki Minaj was sitting on the internet busy running her fucking mouth y'all see who just pulled a gangster ass move ever and got all her methods right along with it while she was sitting over there running her mouth for a whole fucking week see this is mm. what I'm talking about black women don't know how to play chess I'm telling you all with the dominant society ladies while black women out here cussing folks out white people I, I need you to listen to me listen real quick white people are very good at pencil whooping okay they're not gonna argue with you 
You're just going to get a letter that you don't want. Something's not going to go right because they work behind the scenes because they're preserving their image. And black women got so much. Y'all need to come behind that wall. You got so much to learn about that. You want a grandstand because why? Attention whoring, attention. Uh, it's currency in a black community. I did that. Go ahead and do it, sis. I'm going to win at the end, though. You know? I got one thing to say, though. Go right Sometimes, ahead and I'm going to get into this delusion. Okay. All of these things are correct, ladies. But here's the thing. When you find out the rules, <laughs> they can change. And there are a whole bunch of unwritten fucking rules that you're not even going to know. Okay? So the best thing for you to do is when you want to talk, shut up. Keep your mouth closed and watch everybody. Watch mm -hmm. what, it, what they say and how they say it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the, the, these ladies are telling you the basis. Get out there and do it. You can. But the problem is you're always going to run into the unwritten rules. Because once you you get so far. Look, 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 look. We're going to leave that behind the wall that's getting above pay grade, all right? Because that's, that's, that's okay. too much for out here because it's a whole bunch of unwritten rules that you ladies have no idea about. I can promise you that. But hey, let's go. Delusion, everybody. Black men out here kicking motherfuckers' ass. Yours. <laughs> Your ass, as usual. You're his, you have the favorite ass to kick, apparently. Real quick, let's see this DV and then put down by the cops. Let's go. Tonight, a 30-year-old man is dead after an officer-involved shooting out of West Suburban Carroll Stream. Police say that they were responding to a domestic violence incident. NBC 5's Courtney Sisk shares the latest. Tonight, it is still unclear what prompted an officer to shoot and kill 30-year-old Isaac Goodlow at an apartment complex. His family wants answers as police detail a portion of what happened today. Somebody has a stick. And I got a female with a busted eye. It started as a call for a domestic violence situation at the Village Brook apartment complex in Carroll Stream. Officers confirmed a victim had injuries when they arrived, but shortly after... Shots fired, shots fired. Officers encountered a tense, uncertain, and rapidly evolving situation, which resulted in officers discharging their weapons at the alleged domestic violence suspect. Family identified him as 30-year-old Isaac Goodlow III and said the woman was a new girlfriend. Goodlow died at the hospital. They didn't want to save his life. As far as giving us information, they didn't have no urgency to help us at all. His brother Michael says several of their family members live in the same apartment complex but weren't able to get any answers from police on scene. They blocking us out and we feel like it's a cover-up. Police would not provide details about what led up to two officers firing their guns. They would not say if Goodlow was armed at the time of the shooting or provide context about what they call the tense situation. We're working closely with the state attorney's office and the public integrity unit to offer full transparency in this incident. They need to know that the officer's name and even the body cam is very important. Uh, I heard a lot of conversation about transparency and as an advocate and an activist, uh, I think they deserve to have that. The officers involved are now on paid leave pending the investigation. Now, what you've heard is domestic violence. You heard that the woman that he was beaten on had a big ass black eye that he had to stick in his hand. It got out of hand and good police work was done. I'm just going to put it like that. OK, good police work is done. Well, you see, his family is cutting a fool because they said that he's a good boy. He's a nice boy. Yes, he has mental issues, but he's a nice boy. He wouldn't. He wouldn't harm a fly, even though the police were there on a domestic violence call where they saw a black woman, a woman, whatever, because y'all be tripping about biracials and all that shit. But fuck all that. A woman had a black eye. Her shit was busted and he had a stick in his hand and shit was getting real, real sensitive around there. But according to his mama and everybody else, he's a good boy, as per usual. Now, check it. They interviewed the family. And here's the ironic part. Let me pull this up and I need I'm to stop. the civil rights attorney. Let me stop it right here. They're suing, of course, and they're wanting them to bring out, you know, the body cam. They're going to bring it out. No worries. They're going to bring it out. And I don't give a fuck what I see on that body cam. He done beat up a bitch. So good police work. That's all I'm going to say about that. Y'all might feel different, but when men hit on women with closed fists and sticks and that type of stuff, I have no love for it. OK, and I, the family is making excuses and carrying on. You see that blonde wig behind the civil rights attorney? That's his mama. That's his crying, wailing ass mama because she had a good boy. Well, his daddy decided to show up. And I want to show y'all some ironic shit that nobody has pointed out to me and none of that shit. I just noticed when it went down. 
So the daddy steps up to the mic. Now he's talking about how good black men are. Yes, there are some issues, but there's some good black men out here. I got to show y'all what I heard. Okay, let's go. P Groom, um, I just want to say that uh, shut up, bitch. I think I really think the family has said a lot, and I think it's 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 to be honest with you. I, you know, it's it's it's, it's kind of hard for anybody. We we got. We're living in a time where we're living in a time where the black man and the young black men are being um, they're not understood. Did you hear that nigga? They not understood. Ladies, I shit you the fuck not. He's going to go on and on and on and on about how amazing black men are. But I need to see if y'all catch something. Let me take it forward a few seconds. Because I, yes, ma'am. So they don't understand each other. That's why they kill each other every 17 to 20 minutes. Listen, hmm? I need y'all to listen very carefully because something in the universe outed everything he said. Y'all listen up. Time where all young men, no matter what color they are, should be looked up and have the same. They should have the same opportunities of other young men. I really don't believe, and I don't like to interject race in here, hmm. but I must tell you, I do not believe that if this was a if this was a young white boy, young white man, that this would have happened, because they're not lying. He had some problems, but I must tell you, and I'm telling you from experiencing what I know, he was a good young man. If the police had said, introduced themselves and said they was the police, this kid would have obliged to it. Believe me when I tell you this. And he represents a many young black men that are good. We must stop this. This shouldn't have happened like this. If there was a problem, and we'll find out what that is. But if there was a problem, they should have addressed this and handled this properly. Exactly. They shouldn't have just came in and shot this man, this young man like this. They shouldn't have done that. Hey, did y'all hear them niggas shooting in the back? Oh, did y'all hear them? I can't with this shit. What's going on? Hey, the universe, what, what y'all call it? The divine dark feminine and shit was like this nigga lying at this motherfucking podium. Let's take it back five seconds. I, this shit is so fucking juicy, it's unreal. Let's get it. The problem, they should have addressed this and handled this properly. They shouldn't have just came in and shot this man, this young man like this. They shouldn't have done that. The jokes fucking write themselves. Sir, shut Ooh. the fuck uh, they shouldn't have came and done this to this young man. He was waving a weapon. When I was with, look, in the military, they tell you if it's between them and you, I'm letting you know I'm going home. Okay. They can go to hell and I'm going home. And that's exactly what them police, shout out to the boys in blue. Oh my God. What's going on, y'all? Listen, y'all need to shut the fuck up. He couldn't even finish lying. Them niggas was like, they take it too long and I need to kill this nigga over here. So fuck it. He do his news conference and I'm fixing the bang, bang. That was crazy. And I'm like, ain't nobody said nothing. Everybody going to pretend like y'all don't hear these niggas shooting in the back while this man is saying that it's some good black men out here. I'm tired. I'm tired. Well, there were some good black men in that background. Kapow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking finished. I'm done. Wait a minute. Shane, is this your real account, ma'am? Because I'm in the middle. I can't <laughs> yes, do this. Yes. Yes, ma'am, it is. Hey. Hey, ladies. This old crusty motherfucking nigga. <laughs> you just you just gonna get up here and start talking about a whole bunch of shit that one is false and two has not a motherfucking thing to do with just happened. Your crusty 
<laughs> fucked up, crazy ass, ain't shit, worthless motherfucking child that your ass probably wasn't even there to raise. Just beat the fuck off of some out of somebody. Look, Shane, you gonna... it's, time, it's time to get a check. You know that's when they show up. Y'all remember that song that uh Sha Shaquille O'Neal did, Phil is my father, because my biological didn't bother. After he got drafted into the league, his daddy was like, I'm your father. Sounding like fucking Luke Skywalker. Listen, y'all, these niggas ain't worth the fuck. You can't make this shit up. You can't. Ladies, please, I implore you. Can we please hear those pew pews one more time while he's sitting up here lying? This Do is it. this is comedy gold. Y'all are a joke. Problem, they should have addressed this and handled this properly. Exactly. They shouldn't have just came in and shot this man, this young man like this. They shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Well, maybe it wasn't the cops that shot him. Given all the bang bangs in the black background, maybe he just caught a stray. I can't, y'all. I can't. I'm mm. Aaliyah, you got anything on this? Because I'm trying to catch my breath. Uh, <laughs> I don't. It, 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 why the fuck is he trying to talk through the mask? I mean, all that shit sound muffled to me. I mean, I just, mm. I have no words. Damn, Shane, Aaliyah, Mrs. Rowe, Kyra, Snapple, and Ebony. I'm going to tell y'all something. In y'all's real life, and y'all in the chat as well, y'all please stop trying to get random black people to see the light. Y'all shouldn't be dealing with black men regardless, but I'm talking about the mammies and the mules in your life. It is done. You're not going to be able to. Do you understand what you just saw? A civil rights attorney and a whole a blubbering, crying, slobbing ass black woman and all these people just acting like they didn't hear those gunshots. Nobody ducked. Nobody. It happened so much, y'all, that they didn't even look in the direction of where that sound was coming from because they're so used to hearing it. You don't know what the truly sick thing is. Lord, Lord. That black people do this shit with a straight face. They will sit up and and go in on the police and every and go in on the system of white supremacy and white men and being the most oppressed. But they never wanted to di discuss their role in any of this shit. They're just innocent victims of every fucking thing. They've never done anything wrong nothing is ever their fault and it's it's that shit is getting really fucking old and it's getting really fucking tiresome because again you want to hold all these press conferences and talking about how white folks then wronged y'all and did this that and the third but it's never about anything they fucking done like how many black men have y'all motherfuckers shot down all the fucking time. But you want to always talk about what white people do and you, what police officers in particular do and all this other shit. And so y'all ready to address any of that bullshit? Miss me. I don't want to hear it. Well, you know, Aaliyah, black lives don't matter unless white men take them. So that I mean, part. you do do with that what you will. Because again, we just, we get up here like what? Well, whenever we can to espouse the stats and let y'all know what really, what's really going on and y'all bitches call us everything but the child of god i have been two hundred and fifty thousand bags of bitches according to y'all <laughs> so fuck it again y'all have already shown us that black lives don't matter unless a white man takes them they, they take uh, each other out left right and sideways but i guess no. that don't matter. black lives only matter if it has a penis attached to it that part too mm. i don't my thing though is well first of all i'm happy that shane came back to the yes, panel shane 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 and this bitch yes but, but you know he also told on himself on black men there he said that there's a lot of good black men just like the, this nigga that just got shot so you mean that there's the so-called good black men are also dv and, uh Abusers? Yeah, 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 because it exactly. happens. It happens three more times in the black community than it does in other communities. So okay. that does constitute a good black man. Exactly. Easy though. I'm but sorry. My, I might. I have a question though. Why are they calling him a kid? Why are black men perpetually entitled to be called children? Like he's 30 years old. Why is he being called a kid? Look, if he if he was applying for a mortgage, they'd call him a man. See, y'all got to understand narrative spinning around this bitch. Whatever black people are the most victimized, if they can seem like the biggest victim, that's the language they're going to use. If he wanted to get a mortgage, a $500,000 mortgage on a beautiful home, 
he would be a man. But because he's whooping his girlfriend ass and having a mental breakdown at the same time, he's a child. Do you see how that worked? Yes, ma'am. You ain't right because you know his credit score was probably negative 450,000. Ain't no fucking way in hell anybody was going to give him a mortgage. Please Listen, stop. I done had higher bowling scores than that man's credit score. Pull up. Okay. I'm sorry, but how are these mentally ill guys supposedly getting all these women? That's the issue. If 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 you weren't around for him to beat on, here you go. Mm. Go right ahead, Aaliyah, because I'm fixing to show some crazy shit. I'm loving this shit. I'm loving it. No, nah, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, check it. So, ladies, what if I told you that a grown man, you know, me and Kyra just got finished talking about what a man is or whatever, whatever, black dude. So, he at the club with his grown ass, and he getting an argument with a white dude, everybody drunk, him his girlfriend and you know it, it's a club it's a club scene i've never liked the club scene because black people are allowed in clubs and i don't like going places where you know they're welcome that much but anyway so he gets into an argument with the black dude and he gets i'm sorry the white dude and he gets a little worried because the white dude talking a lot of shit and he's like i'm gonna kick your ass da, da, da. would y'all believe me if i told you that he got scared enough of this white dude that he called his mother i'm trying to see something would you believe me if I told you his mother was 70? Would you believe me if I told you that his mother showed up to that club? Huh? I, I, I need to show you something. The bitch in jail, but let's go. A guilty verdict tonight for a 70-year-old Montgomery County woman charged with murder for stabbing a man with her sword cane. And tonight, she still claims it was self-defense. Our Steve Keeley heard from her right after the verdict. I can't move that fast. Y'all see how she playing? This woman just killed a man at a club at 70. Now all of a sudden she's feeble and she can't walk. Y'all better stop letting these black folk fool y'all. They're a bunch of animals. Let's go. I can't walk that good. Our Steve Keeley heard from her right after the verdict. I can't move that fast. I can't. I can't. This leg got metal in it. No, no, don't do that. 70-year-old Renee DiPietro had her bail revoked after she was convicted on all counts of third-degree murder with a deadly weapon. This weapon, a 16-inch blade she had hidden in a cane. She pulled it out to stab 31-year-old Michael Sides in the chest on an Ardmore Street outside John Henry's pub when she came to help her son, who was in a fight with Michael Sides June 10th. Y'all let that sink in. Let that sink in. Black men be beating on each other's asses, right? He gets into a straight up head up with a white guy and he calls his mother who is hiding a sword inside of her cane. This shit sound like a Netflix special. I said, listen, I, I, I didn't know you can hide a sword in a cane. Sister done taught me something. Grandma done taught me. You can't make this shit up. Let's finish. The murder was captured on surveillance that the jury saw and took five hours to come up with their verdict. I spoke with her as she was taken to jail. Renee, do you have any comment about the verdict? Yeah, it was wrong. If it was their yeah. child, if it was their child, what would they do? Okay? Defense. You defend yourself. You have to defend yourself, self-defense, and then you get accused of something. I think the jury saw what they saw on the video, and they saw that window into her mindset. Um, and the extreme indifference to Michael Side's life that she demonstrated that day. The request of the jury was that uh, they believe that she was defending herself, and even if they didn't hold that belief, that even if she was mistaken about the right to defend herself, that would uh, lessen the charges somewhat. And they thought about the self-defense argument, but they came to the correct result. Third-degree murder is what happened here. There was lots of evidence that the way she acted that night was not proportional to the threat she saw to her son. The things she did afterwards, such as hitting him when he's on the ground, not rendering aid, not calling 911. And so I bet y'all wasn't expecting that part. Ladies, the full story goes as follows. When her son called her, her and whoever her man is, another old ass motherfucker, came up there, stabbed old boy in the chest. And then after he hit the ground, she went to wailing on him after he's down on the ground. Now, does this sound like a person that can barely walk to the elevator? She's putting on the Ritz, bitch. That's what the fuck she's doing. But here's the tea. Her son was there. Her husband was there. She's the only one going to jail. Yet another black woman being sacrificed for the sanctity of motherfucking black men. Pull up. 
It was three of them on one, and she's the only one getting ready to die in jail. Okay. DZ. Hmm. Okay. You know, this goes back to what we were saying earlier. She's 70 years old and has no more damn sense or wisdom than she did at 20. Hmm. And hmm. it kind of answers your question from earlier, Tyra. The thing is, you were saying how they still infantilize grown ass men. And when you got old ass women like this, still showing up to fight and kill and get their ass sent to jail for their sons, their grown ass sons. Come on now. Y'all supposed to be gangsters and thugs and y'all calling y'all 70 year old moms in to fight y'all battles. That's real. That's some real gangster <laughs> shit gangsters. I mean, come on now. This, this shit is getting ridiculous and black women still showing up to do this shit and y'all still think y'all got the right to call y'all men actual men? Like, they do they still have a set of nuts? Are y'all do? Are y'all still holding they, they balls while they piss? I'm just curious, like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, you Aaliyah. called your 70 year old mom oh, to come God. in and she was more gangster than you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Aaliyah, this doesn't even seem real to me. I... Mm. This I mean, oh, it, this is messed up. It's getting more and more ridiculous. This is why you got grown ass women around here referring to old ass men with gray hair as babies. Monique, right. see bullshit like that. That's this is why they never ever grow the fuck up. I am speechless. I am not three score and ten, y'all. That is seventy <laughs> years of life. You make it to three score and ten, and you throw the rest of your life away, spend your remaining years away in jail because you're 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 done. Called you down there. How the fuck are they so hard when it comes to knocking black women's block off? But the moment a white man bucks up to them, they're scared. You got to call your mommy because he's not the first person I've seen do this shit. There was one uh, a video on TikTok a while back where this the ooh gotta be careful. This little black heaviest male is ran and got his mama because uh, he said so, he was messing with the girl, a white girl, and the white guy with her told him to leave her the fuck alone. He ran home and got his mommy, and his mommy forced him to fight the white boy while she held the other kids at bay. That's girl, crazy. That's it, crazy. But that's them. Top. That's them, though. Look, listen, y'all. I'm not gonna bore y'all with these juicy ass news stories. Hell, the next one I, I'm not even gonna show. But remember, I told y'all the other shoe gonna drop. Just know that DC is going first. Okay. Remember, I told y'all, mass incarceration is on its way, and the first pawn has been moved. Y'all be careful out here. Y'all be careful out here. Don't get comfortable with all the smashing and grabbing and seeing and all this shit that y'all seeing, and they not showing the part where motherfuckers go to jail. Ladies, it's moving. DC just did they just set a precedence, darling. All right. They talk about taking your DNA and all type of shit. Let me move this from over here so I can tell y'all and show y'all about this woman, right? who did time for her man, right? So they in the car. Of course, there's some substances there. I can't wait to see the comments on this shit. I can't wait to see it. Listen to what happened after she ride or died, y'all. Let's fucking go. Question, ladies and germs. So the, the actually, it's a, oh my God. it is a question. Sorry. Renee, my girlfriend of four years, told the cops that my drugs were hers. She did the time for me. I thought the judge would be lenient because she didn't have a record. Nope. She received two years in prison and lost her job. I visited her twice, but the ride to the prison was too long and I met someone else. I don't accept her prison calls, but I replied to her <laughs> letters. She's getting released in August and expects to come back to her apartment. The landlord let me renew the lease and my name due to the circumstances and i've been paying rent Damn. but my new girlfriend is pregnant oh, this and stays with me i told my girlfriend oh, wow. that renee died Yo. when we first hooked up so Real? she's been wearing renee's clothes as well Yo. how to he didn't do anything right <laughs> <laughs> how to fix things with my girlfriend when renee returns how to gently let Renee know she's been replaced and her apartment is mine. He don't he don't fuck with Renee at all. Yeah. Ladies, look. I don't even know where to start with that. You already know that is a horrible idea. Number one, to mess with black men, and number two, fall on swords for them. Let me refresh you. She took his bid. He basically kicked her out of the apartment, 
told his new girlfriend that she's dead, gave the new girlfriend her clothing, don't even accept her collect calls, maybe he'll write her back, right? And this is the deal. He got a baby on the way. After you kept him out of jail and went to prison for two years, ladies, a mammy is a very, very dangerous bitch. And when I tell you the hunger for dick, black males to be specific, is, is fierce enough for her to, number one, become a felon. Number two, y'all don't understand what type of felon this is. She can't get a job. She can't get an apartment in certain areas. She won't be admitted into certain schools. She won't be allowed into certain countries. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Some of these benefits she won't be able to get. Pull up on me. And she did that for a man who immediately, immediately replaced her. What's going on? But DZ, the bright side about this, though, is that Renee and the new girl can live in the apartment together because, you know, as soon as that baby drops that, the nigga's going to run out on her, too. So those two women can just live together. Lord, help me. I can't. I'm looking at the comments and y'all just hey, no go, go right ahead. Way you can be that stupid. You Renee need to be lobotomized. The new bitch need to be lobotomized, and this motherfucker need to be put in the, a cage somewhere. How is everybody in this whole damn story this stupid? Let me tell you something. This is why when people so we over here saying back to boo, y'all y'all bitches be mad. I am a cop calling hoe. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't give a fuck where you come from. I don't give a fuck if you a fufu and tutu or taekwondarius. Please know that I am a cop calling hoe. If you get too close to me, 911, what is your emergency? Yeah, there's a suspicious person over here. Because ain't no fucking way I'm going to let y'all get to. This is what happens when you allow yourself to align with these people and their quote unquote fake ass struggle. You I see yourself identifying with them. And guess what? Larger society is seeing you as them now. So congratulations, black women. You've successfully replaced them at the bottom of the totem pole. What did you win? Not a goddamn thing. And the fucked up part is 911 is answering the phone less and less now. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that's going to get even worse than what it already is. People think they complaining about the response times now. That's going to get even worse. And this shit is all thanks to y'all that you won't even be able to call 911 in a minute. Because I know in Georgia, they have played on the phone so goddamn bad. And it's like adults doing this shit called in your plan with emergency services you're wasting resources see that's why i said that the ignorance and the stupidity just does not stop with them and so then when you call them when you really really need them and they won't come then you want to talk shit about that i called them and it took them such and such amount of time to get here excuse me who is breaking their neck trying to get to you after all this shit you talk you ain't got no business dialing 911 period Ladies, I don't feel sorry for Renee. I repeat, I don't feel sorry for Renee. Renee's story could have stopped a long time ago at the very beginning if she just heard, do not mess with the Black Evious Mailers, the Cicada, the Dusty, the, the Tyrone, the Quan Darius, or what the fuck ever. Had she not even went there, there wouldn't have been no stop. There wouldn't have been no bid. There wouldn't have been no pregnancy that she knew about, right? It can stop before it even gets started. And y'all are the ones that have the power to do so. If you stop making these choices and keep pretending like shit has changed since Nat King Cole, then it wouldn't happen. Make no mistake about it. I do not feel sorry for Renee. Fuck Renee. Right in her ass three times because I don't have time for that shit. I'm not getting ready to listen to her sob story. If she pops up on social media, she get what she get because that's what she ordered. When you click order and you confirm the address on Amazon and select the payment method, they send you what you ask for. Well, bitch, you picked Taekwon Darius and he was delivered, baby. It is what it is. I tried. Anybody got anything before I take my beautiful motherfucking ass to Discord with my lady? I do real quick. Um, I don't think that Renee and uh, the pregnant girlfriend is going to live together without the Tyrone. Uh, what's going to happen there is Tyrone is going to convince them to be sister wives and they're going to be all up in that fucking apartment together. That part. Hey, have fun. All right, y'all. Y'all have a beautiful weekend. Woo. Get the Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Fuck, fuck you, Renee.